Instant match reaction, Manchester City 2, Everton 0 at the Etihad Stadium. Very, very similar to the game at Goodison Park earlier in the season. Everton, I thought, were absolutely fantastic in the opening 45 minutes, keeping Manchester City at bay, uh, limiting them to very, very little. He had a little bit of, um, you know, look down that, that left-hand side with, with Jeremy Doku. He caught Ben Goffrey a couple of times, I think, but nothing ever came from it. Erlen Haaland didn't have a sniff at goal. We really kept them at bay. The shape was really good. The defensive um, quality was there. Jared Brandweight and James Tarkowski were absolutely phenomenal. I thought Mikhailenko was brilliant. I thought Ben Goffrey done okay. Yes, as I said, he got caught a couple of times and Doku got the better of him on a couple of occasions. But I thought generally he done quite well. But as is the the story in, in these types of games, and, and it feels like this is just a, a movie that I'm re-watching over and over and over again. And this has been the case for... Uh, the last few years when Everton have played Manchester City at Goodison, obviously, as I said earlier on this season, and it was a little bit like this at the Etihad last year as well, in that, you know, Everton come out typically and do well in the first half, um, you know, keep them at bay, keep our shape well. I thought Garner Gay was absolutely fabulous in that first 45 minutes as well, but we often <clears throat> don't take the few opportunities that, we are given and we had moments in that first half don't get me wrong there wasn't any massive chances that we missed you wouldn't say we missed some huge chances but we had moments in the transition in that first half where our attacking players just completely let us down i mean dominic calvert lewin dwight mcneil ashley young and jack harrison couldn't pass a ball five yards in that first half and people can sit there and say oh but you know it's a thankless task to play in manchester city this that and the other no not really the thankless task is for the likes of jared brantwaite and james tarkowski to have to deal with you know erlen harland who's probably the best player in the world at the moment or it's a thankless task for people like Garner Gay in the midfield to have to constant, constantly intercept the ball and, and pick it up and stop players like Matthias Nunes and you know, Phil Foden getting on it and, and breaking through the lines. It's not really a thankless task to expect Dominic Calvert-Lewin to be able to pass a ball five yards or to expect Jack Addison to be able to play a, a you know, a comfortable ball through that it, it should be absolute bread and butter for him. And, and ultimately, once again, that's the difference today. The difference is Everton just haven't got anywhere near enough quality in our in our forward line. It's it, it's as simple as that. We just don't have enough quality up top. You know, the, the, the front four, if you want to call them, or the wide midfielders and the attackers, whether it's better, whether it's Dominic Calvert-Lewin, whether it's Jack Harrison, whether it's Dwight McNeil, whether it's Arnold Danjuma when he's fit, whether it's... Um, Ashley Young, who's played there a couple of times over the last couple of weeks. There's just not enough quality in there whatsoever. And, you know, don't get me wrong, I don't think it massively let us down today. And I'm not hugely disappointed with that today. I'm not overly upset with it because at the end of the day, when you play that well in the first half and you keep them at bay and you stop them from creating chances and you stop them from getting in behind the line and you, you cause them real issues and, you know, people are talking on a half-time and things like that. Is that one of Manchester City's worst half of football in a long, long time? Well, it's because Everton stopped them from doing anything they wanted to do. But you then sort of go in at half time and you think right how feasible is it that we continue this in the second 45 minutes and then you look at the fact that we've got a 38 year old playing on the wing who you know can barely run from minute one never mind when he's had a, a, a difficult 45 minutes of running around you look and you think well, we've got an out of position centre back playing right back um, you know we've got two other wide players playing in different positions because we've got nobody to fill in in Decore's role because Decore's out injured you've got Garner Gay who of course is the wrong side of 30 doing all the running around and then you look at Manchester City's bench and you think Phil Fo uh, sorry Jack Grealish over a hundred million pound player the Kevin De Bruyne over a hundred million pound player Guardiol cost them what 90 million quid in the summer Bernardo Silva they'd probably get 80 million quid for him if they sold him plus a whole host of other names Kyle Walker you know some of the young lads that could come on and make a difference and you look at our bench and you just think <clears throat> you know who have we got who have we got to come on and, you know, uh, and make any form of difference in this game? And it, it really, really gets me down this because I, I just, it's so, so obvious that the Premier League's rules are literally just in place to pull the ladder up 
from teams you know below those top six and, and and yes City have won everything and yes City are the champions of the world and the champions of Europe and the champions of everything else and, and fine absolutely fine you know they, they, they're an example of a team that has been hugely successful and spend an awful lot of money because of that success but it is just a little bit disheartening, isn't it, when you look at their bench and you think there's not one single player on that Manchester City bench that wouldn't walk into Everton's starting eleven. Not one. Not one. If Everton had any one of those players on Manchester City's bench, they'd have started and probably played 90 minutes for Everton today. And yet, we're the club that were punished for profit and sustainability breaches because we were deemed unsustainable. And it was deemed that, you know, we weren't, uh, you know, we weren't keeping our football club sustainable and, and the spending was too much. You know, a 38-year-old free transfer at right midfield, a centre-back partnership worth a combined £1 million, a 30-odd-year-old playing in central midfield, um, <clears throat> a lone player playing behind the striker, Dominic Calvert-Lewin, cost, what, £2-3 million? You then look at our bench, and the majority of whom are underdeveloped young kids who, you know, probably aren't quite at that level yet. And it just makes you think, you know, what, what? What really is the point anymore? What really is the point in this? And, and as I said, I've got no massive grudge losing to Manchester City. I'm, I'm disappointed and I'm, I'm a little bit upset because Everton have lost a game of football. But like I said, it was it was very similar at Goodison. We started well. We were doing really well in the first half. We got 1-0 up. We were keeping them at bay. And then you give them a moment and they snatch that moment. And then all of a sudden, the game runs away from you. It was exactly the same when they played Brentford last Monday. Brentford were doing well, keeping them you know, at bay. Got a goal, 1-0 up, kept them under pressure. They made one tiny little mistake. Manchester City get an equaliser and then I sat there and I said to me missus this will end 3 or 4 1 it'll be a whitewash now even though Brentford have had such a good first you know half an hour 45 minutes it was the same today you can only do so much you can only get so much out of your players the manager can only get so much out of these players before you know you, you start to look at the bench and all of a sudden the opposition are bringing on a, a 100 million pound player a 200 million pound player a 300 and all of a sudden it's just like well what you know you're then relying on the team being so good that they can not only keep the world champions at bay, but they can also keep three hundred million pounds worth of substitutes that come off the bench at bay, who, who are fresh and fresh legs and ready to go and ready to go, and and you know haven't played forty five minutes, so aren't a little bit tired or frustrated. And that was the story today. We we gifted them a, a couple of opportunities. We did well defensively. Even their goal, even their first goal, it comes from a corner that is given to them, which should never have been a corner, should it? Let's be honest, they, they, they both go up, they both had the ball at the same time and the advantage is given to the attacker. And if that's what's in the real book, then whatever, that's fine. The advantage is given to the attacker. But Haaland's goal in itself, there's, there's nothing wrong with it. It's a good side pick for can't do much about it. And, and as I said, I don't think there was many of us that believed when Everton went 1-0 down that we were going to get anything out of the game because there's not many teams in this country that can go 1-0 down to Manchester Man City and get anything out of the game because they are a wonderful football inside with an embarrassment of riches. Um, and to any City fans that want to come on and have a go and laugh and say, ah, you're just jealous, you're this, you're that, you're the other, I think, you, I, I, please don't be that dense to miss the overall point I'm talking about here. I've got nothing against Manchester City. I've got nothing against Manchester City fans being buzzing. I've got nothing against the way Manchester City do things. They've spent a ridiculous amount of money over the years, but they've been hugely successful. There's bigger problems in English football that get away with it than Manchester City. Teams like Man United, who have spent billions and won fuck all and still are allowed to spend billions every year. Chelsea the same. I'm not upset with Man City or their fans, but You've, it gets to a point where you've got to admit that it just it doesn't work for everyone, this rule set. And the way things are at the moment, it's not designed for everybody to get a fair crack at it. I, I've got no problem Man City beat us today. I've got no problem Man City won the treble. I've got no problem with Man City bringing £300 million pounds worth of players off the bench and then ultimately winning the game. The problem I've got is Everton have got a 38-year-old playing right midfield, a loan sign and playing on the wing, a partnership at centre-back worth a million pounds, and a number of players on the bench that, let's be honest, are not at the level to be able to come on and change games of football, be it young players or be it players like Beto, who come on today and you know did nothing and was offside three or four times really, really poorly. My problem is that we're the team that have been punished and, and deemed that we've had a sporting advantage when actually... You look at that performance today, you look at the players on the pitch, you look at the players on the bench, 
there's absolutely no way on this earth that it can be deemed in any sense that Everton have had the sporting advantage. No way whatsoever. So that's what me problems. That's that's who me problems with. It's 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 with this rule book and and this league and and the absolute clown, horrible clown that runs it. Who um, you know doesn't even believe the own things that come out of his mouth. I mean, you only have to read that letter that was published a couple of days ago, and he, you can tell he doesn't even believe what he's saying himself. So how anybody else is meant to believe it, I'll never know. But I thought I thought we put a shift in today. I thought we put a shift in. I mean. To come away from the Etihad with anything is 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 a huge, huge, huge uh, positive, and we obviously saw that last season when we come away with a point. But most of the time, nine times out of ten, I mean, I think uh, there was a stat before the game that Manchester City haven't lost a game at home since December two thousand and twenty-two or something. Um, you know, they've they've now when they score first, they go on and win basically a hundred percent of their games in the last however many years. So. It's not a surprise, it's not a shock, it's not something that we should all be fuming and down with. It, 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 it's probably the result we expected, it's probably the type of game we expected. I expected Everton to be hard to beat today, I didn't expect this to be a 4 5 6 nil. I expected us to be hard to beat, I expected us to be resilient, but I also expected it to get to a point in the game where that becomes too much and, and it just becomes overwhelming and, and as I said you know Man City weren't in top gear in the first half they were probably in second gear they were really poor they could come out in the second half and, and step it up a, a bit without even making a substitution and still could win that game never mind bringing on £400 million worth of players you just sort of look at it then and go oh well oh well what can we do on to the next one move on and, and that's what it is and next week now against Crystal Palace is just so, so important. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm hearing a couple of people on social media talking about Sean Dyche. Obviously, we haven't won a Premier League game since December, that game against Burnley. And I remember sitting down after that game against Burnley and talking about European football. It was obviously, um, you know, when we'd, we'd come out of the points deduction and we'd, we'd, we'd picked all those points back up. And I remember having a little bit of a, a jive. It was, it was a bit of satire about potentially playing in Europe. And since then, we've been absolutely horrendous in fact since we went out in the Carabao Cup it, it just feels like that defeat <clears throat> and the manner of that defeat on penalties and, and the way we lost it just feels like everything has is, is, is took a tumble from then in, in terms of performances in terms of injuries have just got worse we just continuously get an injury on top of injury on top of injury the fans feelings I think dropped significantly on that night and, and haven't quite reached that level again and you know we, I think it's been a while since we last saw a really, really good dominant Everton performance. Um, you know, all the performances we've put in recently, even last week's against Spurs, in which I thought we were the better team and deserve more. I mean, I think it's laughable to think that there's some people on here that get paid to talk about football that say things like Spurs should have put Everton away the other day. Everton were lucky. I mean, uh, fucking hell. Actors, actors pretending to support other football clubs to make a lot of money. That's all they are. Um, but... Yeah, like I said, I, I think performances-wise, we, we look like what we are, a threadbare squad with a ridiculous amount of injuries, with players playing far too much football um, and clearly not confident and clearly not in form. And, and that means that when you go to teams like Manchester City, who've not lost a home game for nearly two years, you're going to find it very, very difficult to get something from it. So, look, I'm not too disheartened about this one. I am disappointed, I am a bit frustrated, especially when, you know, it, again, it, it feels like every time we play Manchester City, this, as I said, Goodison one was the same a couple of years ago at Goodison, it, it felt the same as well. It just feels like we play really, really well in the first half, you know, keep them at bay, and then a decision goes against us. Today's one was one that won't even be mentioned because it, you could you could have given it either way, but, you know, we had the penalty go against us in... Uh, earlier in the year, they were desperate to give a penalty today against James Tarkowski for the same thing, and it was neither of them were ever a penalty. You know, a few years ago, we had the Rodri and Ball go against us. It just feels like we work that hard, and then we get to a point in the game where the officials or someone in the year says, "Hey, we need to keep the title race alive here, so give them something." And look, we may we probably would have gone on and lost that game anyway, regardless, because Man City are a force that you know. Th there's there's probably less than three teams in the world that can compete with Manchester City when they're on, they're on top form and Everton certainly aren't one of those teams so yeah 
it is what it is. As I said, I thought Garner Gay done well. I thought Brantwick done well. I know he got barged off the ball for the second goal, but he's playing against the best player in the world, and it's very, very difficult to, uh, you know, after playing for 80 odd minutes and uh, in that circumstance, it's very difficult to put any blame on him for that, especially given he was absolutely outstanding for the rest of the game. So, yeah. It is what it is. We move on. Saturday for me now is an absolute must win. Crystal Palace are in a dire situation. The, the management uh, there is, is heavily under pressure. They've got a number of key players out injured and um, there's absolutely no room for Everton to come away with anything but three points next weekend. So let's hope that we can. There you go. Let us know your thoughts in the comments. If you've enjoyed it, please leave a like. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new as well. That would mean a huge, huge amount to me. Big thanks for watching and we'll see you later.